<laughs> so I feel excited and also scared to be here with you today. And I hope you don't mind if I tell you something about my dreams. So in school, we are always asked to write our to-do list. So what do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? So aside from pursuing a research career and of course traveling around the world, I also dreamt of starting my own business. Have you ever thought of getting into business? Maybe own a coffee shop, start a restaurant? So I did, and also my father. In fact, it was my father's small businesses which sent us to school. Business is good, my dad said. You earn money while doing what you want to do. You become your own boss. You control your time. And also, you create jobs for people. So I was so convinced. So I asked him, what should I do? And my father said, you have to pursue something you love. What is your passion? So I asked myself, what is my passion? And realized that it is this, the indigenous culture of my country, the people, the music, the costumes, all of them make me happy. So my plan is to create a business to help preserve this place. But business is difficult. It takes time, preparation, and knowledge. And if so, what am I here doing research when they are not really related? How could I learn business from research? Isn't research just about science? But is really research and business two different things? I come to realize after three years of being a research assistant that actually research is also a good teacher for many non-scientific things. And most of these things we can apply, for example, like getting into business. So for example, research told us how to tell our story. In symposiums, conferences, progress reports, even if asking for funds, we have to start with a beautiful introduction. It is our job to explain what we are doing in the clearest possible way. Are we saving the world? Are we saving humanity? We have to explain so that people will appreciate our idea and our research. And in business, it's similar. We have a product and we need to explain it. We need to sell it to many people, to many kinds of people. And being in research exposed us to different kinds of people. For example, our sensei. Our sensei who are always asking for our data, asking so many questions, or sleeping colleagues during journal clubs or seminars, even critiques or reviewers if we submit for a journal. So research taught us how to effectively communicate. Number two, my favorite, the scientific method. So research taught us to plan first before acting, and if we face a problem, then we troubleshoot. Similarly, in business, we might need to create a business plan. So if we find an idea or maybe a problem, we then generate our idea, test it. If it works, then we earn money. If not, then we try something else. So in business and in research, there are many problems. But as researchers, as scientists, we have a critical mind. And so we can formulate solutions to all of these problems. We have learned to answer two important questions while facing a problem. Why does a problem happen? And when does it happen? So we analyze, we study, and then we try again until we get what we want, until we get results. But results don't come easily, right? I mean, you come to the lab every day. Sometimes you come Saturday, Sunday, from 7 until midnight. Some of us don't even sleep. Some of us don't eat. You might even forget your birthday. But even after these sacrifices, sometimes you get nothing. Still nothing, right? But, uh, but even so, we wake up, we come to the lab, do it again and again, because research <coughs> to discipline our disappointment. So the research taught us to discipline our disappointment. And even if we feel all of these emotions, we feel frustrated, we feel mad. Sometimes I cry or eat too much takoyami just to forget that I'm sad. But nevertheless, as I said, research taught us to discipline our disappointment. And it's important, if you get in business, Failures will always be there. But research taught us that failure is okay. Failure is part of it. And that we should never give up. 
Many people, many of us complain that being in research is so difficult. Yes, it is, but if you move to another field, surely at some point we will also feel that it's difficult. It's important to realize that facing a difficult part is an important aspect before you succeed. And some things are supposed to be hard. Nevertheless, it is what is hard that makes it great. So lastly, people want to go to business, but they are afraid to take the risk. They, are, they have many questions. What if this happens? What if I fail? They are afraid. But being in research is all about taking a risk. Every time we perform an experiment, are we really sure that the results are positive? Not all the time, right? But still we do it. We take the first step. We still try. And trying is important if we want to go to get into business. So science is not the only thing that we get from research. Maybe majority of which is science. But aside from that, it's also character. It helps us build our character. And character is something that you cannot learn in school. Character is learned from the lessons of the real world. And so, let us not put research into this box. Sadly, we put so many things into this box. I think this box is our most favorite object. We put people and life events into this box, and we limit them with our own expectations. I suggest that we should shift from this thinking into this one. Thank you.